You can be seated. Good morning. morning. It's wet and dreary morning. It is wet and dreary out there, isn't it? Well, as we move forward in the year, in the Christian calendar year, we have an event that begins this Wednesday. This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, followed by 40 days of fasting and prayer. And all the saints said what? I thought you were going to say, oh my. That's what I'm saying, oh my, not already. (laughs) Ash Wednesday, it begins on Valentine's Day on top of that. The Lord's really putting us to the test this year, isn't he? But we do begin, and I'm praying that you are asking God what he wants you to forgive up this uh, 40 days of fasting and prayer. It'll be different for all of us, but if you'll ask God, he'll point it out to you real quickly. You probably already know, just stopping to think about it. And so we will launch off our 40 days this Wednesday night with Ash Wednesday, with the imposition of ashes upon our foreheads, and there we will launch our journey toward Easter. Well, as I began to think about that, I began to think about also, today is Super Bowl Sunday. Oh yeah, although the Dallas Cowboys are not there, unfortunately, y'all didn't pray hard enough for them. But, but the Chiefs are there and the 49ers are there, and I know which team I would like to win, but I'm on, I'm on Facebook and on camera, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut. But you know who your team is if you're going to be watching. But I began to stop and contemplate and think about Ash Wednesday coming up, and instantly my stomach is wanting some kind of juicy morsel to eat. And I began to dream up all the best kind of snacks I could have as I sat around watching the Super Bowl. Are you like that? You're probably not. I'm a foodie. Obviously, you can tell by my figure I'm a foodie. I try to avoid it at all costs, but it keeps sneaking up on me. You know, as we stop and think about the juicy morsels of foods that we like to eat, the things we enjoy, there is one juicy morsel spiritually that we are forbidden to partake of. It is called gossip. Gossip is a juicy morsel. You know, we all like to hear, I don't know, what is it about us that likes to hear a little dirt on somebody every now and then? And you know, if we're if not real careful, we'll even do it among our family members, you know, our extended family primarily. We'll, we'll talk about it a little bit. We have to be so careful. You've heard about the... The day that the, there was a group of pr- people lined up and they were asked the question, what is your greatest temptation in life? And one guy said, well, mine is, I have to be careful about, about not looking at pornography. Another guy said, I have to be so careful about not overeating. The third guy was a priest and they said, what is your greatest temptation? And he said, gossip. <laughs> so... <laughs> We all have things we battle with, isn't that right? In Leviticus, in our reading today, interesting reading, it's talking about something that doesn't seem to be attached to what I'm talking about today, but oh, you're going to find out that it is. In Leviticus chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, and he spoke to them because When a man has skin on his body and there's a swelling, a scab, or a bright spot, and it becomes skin of his body, it's a leprous sore, then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to to one of his sons, the priest. You know, back in that day and time, the health inspectors, the people who kept the health code for the nation was the priesthood. Still true today. And going on down, it says in verse 46, He tells us that he shall be unclean all the days he has the sore. He shall be unclean. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. His dwelling shall be outside of the camp. 
Leprosy, also called Hansen's disease, is a very infectious disease. And when it is left untreated, it disfigures and maims and ultimately kills the body that it is in. I don't know, most of you have never seen leprosy. I've seen it in Africa. I've seen this kind of leprosy in Africa. By the way, I've seen this kind of leprosy healed in Africa. Isn't that great? But in this particular case, there was no known cure for leprosy. And it was required by law, if the person had leprosy, that they were declared unclean. That meant that they had to distance themselves from the community. They had to live as outcasts, apart from their families, apart from their community, separated, rejected, living in rejection. Our Lord walks in on the scene and he reverses this most sad state of affairs. In Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 45, in our reading today, a leper comes up to Jesus. He kneels down before him and he says, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And now the Lord looks at him and he says, out of the compassion in his heart, he did something absolutely unthinkable. You don't touch unclean lepers. Jesus reached out and touched the unclean leper and said, I am willing, be cleansed. Shock enough that he would reach out and touch somebody with leprosy. But not only that, he says, you can be cleansed. And instantly the leprosy left the man and he was cleansed immediately. And then warning him sternly, he dismissed him. And he said, I want you to go and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. So back in that day and time, if you had leprosy or if you had a disease that made you unclean, you always had to go to the priesthood and the priesthood would declare whether or not you were clean or unclean and what kind of offering you would need to offer. Now, we don't really encounter in America modern day, a modern day leprosy like this, but we have a different form of leprosy. Leprosy was a disease, but leprosy in the Old Testament was also a symbol and a type of sin. A sin that disfigured the body, but also disfigured and maimed our souls. We are actually told of a story of Moses' sister Miriam in Numbers chapter 12, where she spoke against Moses. One translation says she slandered Moses because of his wife. And then she goes on to say that, hey, you're not the only one God talks to around here. He talks to me as well. And so instantly the skin on her body turned white, it says. And all of a sudden, leprosy is all over her. You can go back and read all about it. I'm not going to bring all that out right now. And it began its disforming work and she had to be declared, be declared as unclean, which meant that she had to be, according to the law, quarantined for seven days, isolated from family, the sanctuary, friends, and community. What did she do? She spoke against Moses in a way that slandered him or d demeaned him before other people. Slandering is nothing more really than murdering or demeaning a person's public image. And so whenever we slander somebody, that person and who, to whomever we slandered them to, whenever they see that person, there's a question mark in this person's heart against the person slandered. It murders their public image. And Miriam publicly slandered Moses and was struck with a form of leprosy. She had to be separated from her spouse, the children, parents, family, friends, alone, isolated, and rejected for seven days in her particular case. 
And then she had to be restored and cleansed in the normal way of restoring a leper by the sacrament of reconciliation with the priesthood. What I want to say to you today and what the Lord is talking to us about as we get ready for Lent and the cleansing of our souls, the sin of spiritual leprosy called gossip and slander is one of Satan's chief pleasures. But his chief pleasures are actually extremely poisonous to us. Satan's pleasure of criticalness and gossip and slander gives us a form of spiritual leprosy. That's why in Proverbs 6.16 it says, there are six things that God hates. Seven are an abomination to him. And then he goes through that list. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil. That, I, would, I can understand all that. A false witness who, who lies. And then he lumps into that group anybody who sows discord or division among brethren. Wow. In that serious list, he talks about gossiping. That's why Proverbs 18, verse 8 says, The words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles, tasty morsels, and they go down deep into the inmost body. Some translations say they actually goes deep into your bones. When somebody gossips to you about somebody, those words go down into your bones and they stay with you for the rest of your life. You and I have to stop and purposely dismiss those thoughts about that person the next time we see them. Gossiping and slander is a very serious form of leprosy. And gossiping about folks... And so God has a great displeasure about it because it sows division and discord between people. It brings divisiveness and it, it murders or demeans the public image of another person, of another person. And so we saw that God really does not like it. When we participate in Satan's pleasures, we eat poison. He is so poisonous. He drips with poison. And so he gives us then a spiritual leprosy. So we need to take great care when we're talking about other people. You know, it's easy to talk about Nancy King. Isn't it great to talk about how great of a lady she was? We all love Nancy. By the way, for all of you who wore all those hats, all you ladies who wore those hats to honor her, that was fantastic. I love that. I know the family did too. Matter of fact, a neighbor of ours asked Bernadine, do, do the ladies at church always wear hats like that? She was impressed she was an older lady because growing up in her day and time, people wore hats to go to church. But thank you all for doing that. and Thank you for all the ways you honored the kings, you honored Nancy, all the, all the kind and nice things you did. And we, we really, that was just a, a great time to launch her to go on to heaven. It's, it's easy to talk about people like her. She's easy to talk about. But I'll tell you who it's not so easy not to talk about. National leaders. State leadership in our government. Now that is a different story. That is the national pastime of just about everybody in the nation. Yeah, that's right, Kevin. Lord have mercy. And I'm, I can tell you, the rhetoric about our national public figures need to be repented of because we are publicly cursing those people especially those in office, and the news media is worse about it than anybody I know of. I can tell you right now, I am unable to think of another president 
in my entire lifetime that I disagree with more and more about the way he does things and about his policies than I do our current president. I, in my heart, I had a disgust toward him. A disgust that was so strong in my heart, <clears throat> even though I'm commanded to pray for him daily, it's, I could barely pray for him. And then one day, as I was praying, God unveiled the supernatural world to me, and I saw the demon spirits that were using him like a puppet, and I broke and wept because I moved from disgust to pity. Even today, when I pray for him, I have pity in my heart for him and so many people on the national level because I can see the evil demon spirits that are using so many people. And then I can see what they're going to do with them when they're finished with them. And it became moved from disgust in me to, to pity. And so I had to pray really hard about that to, to get that straight in my heart. Do you have to pray hard about things like that? I do. I do. You know, in the center here, and our stained glass, Lucas, you did such a great job of help, helping put all that together. <clears throat> we have the Holy Spirit, the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because when you come in here, when I come in here, our purpose is to acquire the Holy Spirit and the graces of God that I need to overcome the things I need to overcome. You see, he who began a good work in us will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. And this is the way he does it. We come to church. We receive the Holy Spirit. We receive his graces. And it changes us and makes us something we previously were not. Church is not a self-help program. It's a Holy Ghost help program. It's a Holy Spirit help program. It's where the God, the Holy Spirit, comes and gives us grace and transforms us and changes us and makes us into something we were not before. Isn't that great? And so I stopped being disrespectful to him because Proverbs 18.21 says these words, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. I'm telling you, when I, when you and I need to realize is that when we want to talk about somebody in a negative way, do you know who's inspiring our thoughts and our hearts to do that? Turn to somebody and say, could it be Satan? Go ahead and ask them that. Could it be Satan? Would he inspire you and I to say gossip and say slanderous things about other people, murdering their public image? And then would he send demons riding upon our words so they could attach to that person and keep them in that position in their life? That is not what God the Holy Spirit does. So when we participate in that, we are displaying that we're unclean. We have a leprosy. I got some good news for you. Jesus walks in on the scene. He loves to heal lepers. And I, you know, I have a prayer even before we all have a prayer before we come up here today. We, and every Sunday we say, Lord, you did not scorn to enter and to dine with sinners in the house of Simon the leper. Scorn not to enter into the house of my humble soul, although I too am a sinner and a leper. Not only that, but Jesus said in Matthew 10, 8, as you're going out, I want you to heal the sick and I want you to cleanse the lepers. Leprosy is the picture of what sin does to our soul. It disfigures and it maims our soul. And God has two remedies. 
The first one is the sacrament of reconciliation. Just like Jesus sent the leper to the priest to be reconciled and to be declared clean, God still does that. I know some of you don't really believe that. Oh, I'm not going to confess my, my sins before another man. That just lets me know you've never been to reconciliation before. Because these are the first things you say when you walk in. <clears throat> Father, forgive me for I have sinned. And the first thing I say back to you is there is nobody who can forgive sins except God. Your confession of sin is for me to observe your repentance and your broken heart about it and to declare the good news of the kingdom of God. You are cleansed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be whole and be healed. And that's it. And some people don't come in because they're ashamed. They, they live under the cloud of a demon of shame as if I hadn't heard it a thousand times before. By the way, in case you're wondering, we all struggle with the same stuff. You're not special. You're not unique. You're not more unique than anybody else. You're not worse than anybody else. You're not better than anybody else. In so many ways, even though you're unique and special, you're just like everybody else. Besides all that, I've heard it so much, I can't even remember what half, half the things people tell me. It's just, a, it's just a blur to me anymore. The sacrament of reconciliation. You know, that requires humility. Bernie and I were talking about humility this morning. She's talking about the book, the, book, the, ladder, the ladder of Divine Ascent. Chapter 25 is in the longest chapter in the book is about humility. Now, most of you are not no good, rotten, down, good-for-nothing, dirty, rotten sinners. But I'll bet you everybody in this room struggles with being humble. Do you struggle with being humble? I struggle with being humble. I mean, I, I do pretty good when I come up here. i got to show off in front of you. But ask my wife, does he struggle with being humble? And she will, in humility, say, no, nah, he doesn't do that. She just joined a liar's club. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just saying we all struggle with being humble. You know, what is it to be humble? Does it mean to be, I, that I'm shamefaced, walking around, feeling terrible about myself? No. To be humble is to be reined in. If you ever get a chance to watch Billy and Rosemary ride in a cutting horse uh, competition, it's fascinating to watch. But uh, those horses have got to learn to be uh, directed by the reins. Until they stand before a cow, then the rider has to let their hand down on the, on the weathers of the, of the horse and not rein that horse anymore and let that horse cut that cow out of the herd. And then they've got to be reined back in again. You and I need to learn to be reined in by God. That's called humility. When I let myself be reined in by the living God. And so, the first thing I need to do is to to do that, the sacrament of reconciliation helps me with that. The second thing I need to do is found in 1 Corinthians 10.31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, everybody say it together, do all to the glory of God. Everything you do, do it for the glory of God. Do it to honor God at work, at play, at watching the Super Bowl, whatever you're doing, whenever you're talking to anybody about anybody, you do it for the glory of God. And then verse number 32 says, avoid giving offense. Avoid giving offense. You know, all this starts at home. This is where we start practicing the best. The way husbands and wives speak to each other. 
Husbands, wives, you should never cuss each other. You should never speak in a demeaning way to each other. You should be on guard, and if it's about to come out of your mouth, exit stage right immediately until you can get control of your mouth. You and I have got to be so careful about the way we speak to one another. Because we don't need leprosy just in our, just in our homes. And so, <clears throat> the first thing I've got to do is learn to repent, be humble, and then live for the glory of God by not giving offense to anybody. By, by simply trying to please, not just please people, please God in the way I treat other people. It's so important. And so as I'm thinking about all that leprosy does to us, the new covenant makes such a difference because Jesus is our healer. He's not, our, he's not here to judge us. He's not here to condemn us. There is a day he will be the judge, but right now he is the healer. He is the Lord, our healer. And if you have trouble at times about things you say about other people, if you struggle with that, the Lord is so glad to walk in and to heal you. So, you know, I've, I've discovered something. <clears throat> Whenever there is real love between people, there is real respect. There's no such thing as love without respect. And so, if I want to live every day for the glory of God, I have to take care of the dignity of other people. Now, I hate preaching this because I will be tried and tested all this next week for saying this. So I need your prayers. We all pray for me? But respectful love especially as we move toward Valentine's Day, and especially as we move toward 40 days of fasting and prayer. God, heal my wrong ways. Love me so freely. And keep a healing balm of your grace and the Holy Spirit upon my tongue. So when I speak about other people, even if I strongly disagree, I can always compliment and bring the grace of God to them. By the way, can I give you just one little tidbit before I quit? Yes. Three people. The rest of you are ready for me to quit. If you disagree with somebody, th let me help you say this to them in a kind and respectful way. And here it is. You ready? Well, that's one way of looking at it. Would you consider looking at it another way? And stop and look at them. And wait. If they're not willing, they'll let you know. <laughs> and then it, just keep it to yourself. Otherwise, the learn to live and discourse with each other in a, dis, in a respectful way and avoid the poisonous morsels of gossip and slander. Lord Jesus, heal us, we pray. Bring healing to our bodies. Bring healing to the way we talk about other people. Lord, help us by the grace of the Holy Spirit and the healing power of the Eucharist bread and wine. Lord, would you heal us in such a way that we speak and take care of the dignity of other people. Lord, bring your kingdom upon our tongues, we pray, so that the will of God gets done. And Lord, we ask you to heal us of all spiritual leprosy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.